welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. My name is Shayna and I do videos on fashion, lifestyle, and beauty. So if you are into that sort of thing, please click on the subscribe button down below and like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoy this type of content. And you can also hit that little bell notification um, to be notified every time I upload a video. So I hope y'all are having a great weekend. It's Saturday. Uh, we are lounging around the house today and I've got some ribs slow cooking in the oven. I'm pretty excited about those, but I wanted to definitely make sure that I get a video up for this week. Um, and I actually am a little late. Usually I try to do it on Thursday or Friday. So this is just a little bit late this week. This week is the week after the 4th of July. It's just like, I don't know, it's been a really kind of yucky week <laughs> um, outside and just in general. <laughs> so anyways, I wanted to come on and um, share some things on here. Today's video is going to be all about bags I've sold and why I sold them. Um, and I have a handy dandy list here, a pretty long list. Um, and I'm going to do it by brand. Um, how I like the brand or whatever. And then obviously I don't have these bags anymore, at least most of them. Um, I, I do have some up for sale that I will share at the end of this video. Um, but I will share a picture of when I own them, um, next to me whenever I'm talking about them. All right. So we're going to get started with Balenciaga. Uh, first, let me share the bag I'm currently using is my Palm Springs Mini. I love this bag. I compared this in the bum bag in my last video. So if you've not seen that one yet, check it out. Um, again, can't say enough about it. Love this so much. Lint color today is a beautiful nude light -like color from Revlon. It's called Bear It All. And it's very pretty like nude color. I love it so much and it's their cream so it's super hydrating which i love that about it um it doesn't dry out my lips i've been having some really bad issues lately with dry lips um and so it's nice to be able to actually put lipstick back on um because lately i've only been able to wear chapstick they've been so bad but anyway let's go ahead and get into the first brand of bags i've sold and why the first brand is going to be balenciaga um, I've stated this before in recent videos, but Balenciaga was kind of like my first love. Um, it got me into designer bags, and I had quite a few of them at one point, and I did sell a lot of them because I kind of drifted off into the Louis Vuitton uh, world. However, I'm kind of drifting back into the Balenciaga world. It's, it's just, it's crazy how your mind changes throughout the years and how you like something and then you don't like it as much anymore and then you come back to it but that's kind of like where I am with Balenciaga so I will share um what I've sold um Balenciaga wise anyway so I did have a 2013 Black City um and regular hardware all of my bags have been in regular hardware because I love the tassel so much I just love the edgy look to that so I never had the G12 or the g21 hardware the, the largest size but they've all been in the regular hardware so i sold the 2013 black city but since i have repurchased the black city and i got it in the 2007 year and the reason why i did that is because i honestly did not prefer the agnew lambskin leather on that 2013 city bag it was kind of I don't know, I've said it too in previous videos. I prefer the 2005, 2007 to 2007 era Balenciaga leather because it was the chevre leather, it was the goat skin. It was more, I don't know, it was just more soft to me. I didn't like that Agnew leather. So I ended up selling that Black City, but then I ended up picking up another one and 2007 and that leather is to die for i will put a picture of nicole richie's black city bag that i have went off of forever i mean it's just i don't know it's gorgeous i love the wrinkling and the mushiness if you want to see any videos on my balenciaga black city i do have quite a few um in my videos so you can go and look, check those out if you're interested um, the next one I sold was a 2004 Marin City is what it's called. And that's like a chocolate brown color. Um, and that was kind of when, no particular reason, I just was drifting away from 
Balenciaga, like I said, kind of getting more into Louis Vuitton. So I sold that one, the 04 Marin City. Again, I'll put some pictures up here beside me as I talk about them. Um, then I sold a 2009 Popre City. And this one is kind of a regret because that red berry color, oh my word, it is gorgeous, you guys. Um, I, I just, that bag was beautiful and it was 09, so it wasn't in my 05 to 07 leather era, but the leather was amazing on that bag. It felt like, it felt like the Chevrolet leather, not the Agnew leather. So that was that one. And then the next one on my list is the 06 Ink Twiggy. Um, it was the only Twiggy bag that I've ever owned and I love that bag so much. Shout out to, um, Agent Bag Reviews, um, I have been watching her channel a lot lately because she's been doing a lot of Balenciaga videos and I will link her channel down below if you are interested, um, check it out. But she just did a video on her Twiggy and it's like, a, she referred to it as like a little small duffel and that's so true. Um, it kind of made me want another one again, but I, um, I sold my Ink Twiggy, 06 Ink Twiggy. Next is a 05 Rouge Theater Day. And if you guys know anything about that Rouge Theater color, it was like the most sought after red for besides 2004 True Red. Um, the Rouge Theater Red was like the most sought after red for the longest time. And unfortunately with that day style bag, um, I don't know, it was a hobo like bag. And I just, I didn't like the way it looked on me. I'll post some pictures again. Like I just, it was, I don't know. It just, it just did not work for me. And then the last Balenciaga bag I'll mention that I uh, probably most recently sold was my black Le Cagolet bag. Um, and the reason why I sold that bag, I did a review on it. That's also in my videos. I love that bag. I still love that bag, but I did not feel like I needed that bag and the Prada re-edition, the 2005 re-edition, re which I also have a video on that bag as well. Um, I didn't need both of them in my collection because they were just too similar and I actually preferred the Prada in that style. So they both had like pouches hanging off of them. I don't know. It was just very similar to the Prada bag. So that's why I decided ultimately that I did not need both in my collection and I sold that bag. All right, moving on to Louis Vuitton. Now this is going to get a little bit cray cray. Um, so some bags, here's the bags that I sold. I had a classic Speedy 30, not the Bandelier, and a classic, oh yeah, I'm sorry, a classic Speedy 30. I had it in Monogram, and I had it in Damier Bean. I just was over the hand holding, like just the crook of your arm, um, and then holding the handles. I'm just, I was over that. I was more into crossbody bags, sling bags. I wanted to be hands-free, and ultimately, that's why I sold those classic styles. Then I have the Speedy B25 on here, which is gonna come as a shocker to you guys, I know, because like I said in a previous video, if you haven't checked that out on the Speedy B, it's my golden child. Um, it's my favorite handbag in all of my collection. It's like a little mini keep all. I love that bag so much. Um, but when I bought it, it had the updated ch raised chaps on it. And there was quite a few quality issues with it, to be honest. Um, and so I decided to sell it. Um, I just, I don't know, it just kind of bothered me. And I, and I, again, obviously I've repurchased that bag, but I repurchased it. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read my, I've got so, so many things coming through on my phone right now. Anyway, um, I wanted an older version of it. So I ended up getting a 2011 version because that's actually the year that they launched that bag. So I really like the chaps better on that version, the older version. So I ended up ultimately going with an older version of the Speedy B25 and sold that newer version. Then I had the Speedy B30 and the Giant Monogram Collection. You guys, when I saw that bag, I just thought it was so cool. The blown up monogram, it almost looked pixelated. I loved it so much, but it just, it ultimately was just a, I'm using that word ultimately a lot today, but it just became like a collector's piece, just sitting in my closet. I didn't like the way the Speedy B30 looked on my body frame. It just looked too much like luggage to me. It just was huge. It just seemed huge. And I didn't like um, how big it looked on me. 
and I'll try to find a picture of me wearing that crossbody. It just, it just looked kind of improportionate um, on me. Then I had a vintage petite Noe, Noe. <laughs> and if you've seen that one, it's the one that doesn't have the Vachetta bottom on it, like the new model. I have repurchased the new model because again, I love the, love the style of the bag, but I like the way the new model looked with that Vachetta on the bottom. So I ended up selling the vintage. Then we have another shocker on here, the Palm Springs Mini, which obviously, I did repurchase. The reason why I sold, that was my first, my first one that I ever had in 2016. And it was because I decided that I wanted to try the PM size instead, the medium size instead of the mini. And I did not think I needed both in my collection, obviously. So I sold the mini and got the PM. And then I went back to the mini and ended up um, selling the PM and the regular monogram. And then I purchased the reverse monogram and ended up selling it recently. Actually, just a couple of weeks ago, I sold that one. So, um, I just, the PM never, it just did not work out for me. I did not feel like I needed, with having the Monstery GM backpack, I didn't feel like I needed that PM size in my collection. I was content with the, the larger size GM and then the Palm Springs Mini. So, yes, so I sold the PM in both monogram and then the reverse monogram as well. Then I had the Pochette Matisse, and I, I got that bag, I feel like, because everyone was raving about it so much. And it is such a cute bag. It reminds me of a little briefcase, and sometimes I still think about that bag. But I... I don't know. There was just, it just did not work for me. I didn't like, and maybe I should have tried a different strap on it, but I did not like the uh, monogram strap on that bag. I just felt like it was way too stiff. Like, I just, I did not like it at all. Um, but anyway, I sold that bag, ended up selling it. I had the Monsery backpack in the new model um, as well. And I ended up selling it because of quality issues. <laughs> Really, I have gone back to so many older Louis bags because the quality back in the old days is has proved itself to be so much better than the new models. So I ended up selling that new model Montserrat and getting a that vintage GM backpack, which I used as a diaper bag. I have a video down below on that, as well as a backpack video. I love that GM Montserrat so much. I love the vintage look of it. It's just awesome. And then I had a vintage Noe GM, so I had it in the large size and decided that the petite size worked better for me and I did not need both of my collection, so I ended up selling that one as well. That vintage Noe that I had, though, that I ended up selling was, like, from 1987, so it was crazy. Like, that quality is just amazing back in those days. And then um, I'm on to some other designers now. Um... I had a Givenchy medium Pandora in the black Pepe leather with the gold hardware. And I love the way that bag looked. That crinkly lambskin leather was just so cool to look at. But I don't know. I just, I felt it to be very heavy. It had a handle on it. You could wear it in the crook of your arm on your shoulder. And it also had a crossbody. But it kind of protruded a little bit when you wore it crossbody. I just, I didn't like the look of it um, at all. So I ended up selling that one. And then... From Chloe, I had the Mini Faye backpack in the brown tan color, and I ended up selling it as well because I just didn't feel like I needed too many backpacks in my collection. So, I love that bag. It was super cute um, and very functional, but the Palm Springs Mini just cannot be beaten when it comes to a mini backpack. So, I ended up selling that one. And then, for some contemporary designers, I had... Um, Okay, y'all remember when the Rebecca Mink Golf Mini Max were like the it bag of, I don't even know what season it was, but they just, I mean, it was every season because they came out with beautiful colors. But I ended up, whoops, I ended up, I dropped my paper, having the um, two Mini Max in both black. One was black with all the matte black hardware, so it was like black on black, and it was very edgy. I love that bag. And then um, one was black leather again with the rose gold hardware. And I love that bag as well. Um, and I feel like I had a burgundy one at, at one time too that I ended up selling. But I can't remember um, 
and I don't have a picture of it. So anyway, um, yes, those, the, the leather on the Rebecca Mink Golf bags, they're so gorgeous. I just love, I love those bags, but, and the, how they have the studs, they're very Balenciaga like, like just very, they give you that vibe, the Balenciaga vibe. So, but I sold those off. Then during the Mansur Gabrielle bucket bag craze, I also picked up the black flannel one on one of their relaunch dates, which was crazy because you know how fast they would sell out on their website. You had to like be on there like immediately and like just have it in your cart, have an account ready, click pay now. Like it was crazy. The craze over that bag was insane, but I found it too structured for a bucket bag. And so I ended up selling that one as off. And I had it in the red interior. The one that like everyone loved at the time was either the royal blue or the bright red flamma um, color. And then I recently sold my MZ Wallace tiny Metro tote um, in black. And that was, it was such a cute little bag and so carefree. I would just put like a couple of cards in it, a lip gloss in my key fob and be good to go. But I just felt like it looked kind of funny on me because of my, I mean, I have a little bit more broader shoulders and it just was such a tiny bag. I did not feel like it looked that great on me. Um, and that's the end of my list, guys. Now, right now, I currently have for sale, um, up for sale right now, my Marc Jacobs pillow bag in this sage green color. No particular reason. I am just not getting use out of it, and it's just sitting there, and I just, I don't know. I just, I want it to go to someone that's going to love it. It's practically new. I mean, there's no wear and tear on this at all. It's gorgeous. Um, and I just, I love the bag. This lambskin is absolutely so squishy and amazingly gorgeous. I love it so much. I love this back pocket, but I just feel like it's just not getting enough wear. It's just sitting in my closet. So I want someone else to get it and enjoy it. So I've currently got this one for sale. And then also there's a designer in Knoxville and her name is Patricia Nash and she has the most beautiful leather handbags. The leather is just always to die for on her bags. Um, my sister-in-law had this bag I'm about to show you in the mini size. Like it's like a really teeny tiny size, like maybe this, this big. But, um, and that's the one I actually was searching for and this, they no longer make this bag anymore. So I could not find it in that size. I found it in this size. And as you can see, I mean, the leather is just gorgeous. I love how this looks right here. It's amazing. And then it's got this beautiful fringe. Um, and then a nice leather adjustable strap. There is some wear and tear on this adjustable strap, but overall it's pretty good. It's got a nice back pocket similar to that Marc Jacobs. And then look at that mustard interior. That is so pretty. I love that. And then that's a really nice mag magnetic um, back closure. And then this yellow, um, and more, it's like a, it's like a microfiber suede interior in there. And then you've got the Patricia Nash tag right there, but she makes beautiful handbags. I would put her in the same category as a, um, contemporary designer. She also, um, there's also a front pocket in here and it's actually got a place to put cards in too. I did not realize that. But I'm just not using this. I really ultimately, this flat, by the way, is like a suede too. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but it's gorgeous. I really wanted the mini size, so that's why I'm selling this one. I'm really selling this at, at a good price because it retails for over $100. And um, if you're interested, just DM me on Instagram. If you don't follow me over there, it's Style with Shayna, and I will be happy to answer any questions you might have. This is the Patricia Nash like logo right here stamped on the back. But this leather, I don't know if you can tell, it's really gorgeous and it still smells really good too. But ultimately I did want the mini size like my sister-in-law has. I just don't really care for this bigger size too much. This would be a cute bag for like a Nashville girls trip though. Um, but yeah, those are the two that I currently have for sale. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I love bags for people to talk about bags they've sold and the reasons why they sold them. So I thought that would be a good video for this week. Um, I'll share this. I'm wearing, I'm actually wearing a Nashville 
um, sweater today. I love the detail with the cute cowboy boots. And then for my jewels, I've got my Roberto Coin little baby cross necklace on. I've got on this little boutique like bracelet because it matched my sweatshirt so well. And then my wedding set and then my Pandora bracelet. Some gold hoops from Ana Luisa. And we're just kind of taking it easy today. So again, thank y'all so much for watching. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing more videos from me. I appreciate it so much. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye y'all.